Well, of course, people are really thoughtful and concerned about data and privacy and security at the moment. We've got GDPR, so everybody's mm -hmm. aware of it. We've had some headline stories, Cambridge Analytica and so on. And at Google, one of the things we've always tried to do is think about the user of our services and protecting their security and privacy. So um, when you search on Google, all we really want to know is where are you if you want to share the location and what are you looking for so we can give you that information. We don't actually want to know who you are or your friends are or anything else. And our core is all about helping you get things done by finding information. But Google are expanding, aren't they? You've got a shopping arm, for example. You're developing AI. And the Google founders did at one point say, you know, at some point we're going to know you better than you do. And that relies on collecting information. So perhaps you could explain that. If that's what you're trying to do, then you do need to know all the things that, say, Facebook know about us. I, well, again, I think it's very different between sort of the social networks mm. and something like Google Search. If you, if you want to get great results on search, most people are searching now using their phone. Mm. Um, and most people um, want to share their location. So when you look for a restaurant, mm -hmm. you get results that are restaurants uh, near you. And actually, what's different in our model, I think one of the reasons that, that, that the founders were able to make Google Search so effective, is it's about knowing what you're looking for, mm. uh, not who you are. Have you learned anything from this whole data scandal episode? Have you changed the way you've worked? Have you improved your systems? Because people are still very nervous. They'll listen to what you're saying today and they'll take it all in and they'll check their settings, but they'll still be quite unsettled. So are you doing things to alleviate those fears? Yeah. Um, we built this My Account um, tool for users some years ago and 20 million people a day come mm. to it to check on their settings and they make changes and they understand what's there and so we've learned quite a lot from that over time you know what concerns people and how can we make um, more control possible for them I think that's one of the most important things we've done but we're always looking um, uh, how we can improve services for our users because ultimately you've got plenty of choice and you can choose to use other services anytime you want and um, the first thing we've really tried to do over recent years is improve security. Mm. So you can't have control and privacy if your data is not secure. So that means encrypting every time you search, it's encrypted, uh, so people can't hack into that. That means if you use Gmail, you can have two-factor authentication, so have an extra password code. That means that your account's really secure. Once you've got that sort of security, then you can give people the control that they want and the options that they want, and that's one of the things we work hardest to do. So we're always investing uh, in trying to improve things and listening to users and listening also to the authorities. And um, can the internet be properly regulated, do you think, or is it just too big now? You mentioned that you comply with the laws mm -hmm. and regulations of the countries you operate, but the criticism has been that those who make the rules can't quite keep up mm. with the tech companies. You're not mm. operating outside of the law, mm. you're operating ahead of it. I think it's definitely the case that the pace of change in technology is accelerating, mm. and that makes it hard for people to understand you know, what's going on and also to think about well, what are the rules which we want to have here mm. and you know I've been at Google 11 years initially uh, running operation in the UK and, and over the last few years across Europe the Middle East and mm. Africa and we spend more of our time now than ever helping um, our policy makers to understand what's actually happening. Do they get it? Um, I think lots of people do mm. and actually the generation that's coming through have you know more grown up with this technology and um, uh, mm tend to be heavier users, but it's definitely the case there's a risk that the technology companies and the politicians talk past each other, and one of the things in my job is that is important is to spend time explaining what we do, listening to what can, can change, and then looking at how we can work together. Mm -hmm. And I think what we need to do is get better at educating each other, mm -hmm. politicians educating the tech companies mm -hmm. on what they're worried about, and the tech companies looking at how technology mm -hmm. and laws together can give us better answers, whether it's on child protection, mm. whether it's on copyright protection, whether it's on fake news. And there's a real concern at the moment that children aren't getting hold of technology at such a young age. I mean, you walk down the, the street and you see children in prams on phones, sort of on YouTube or, or whatever, and children are being encouraged to take tech into schools as learning mm. aid. How much tech is too much tech for children? And when are they too young to have access to tech all the time? I think. Um, this is a really hot topic for parents. I'm a parent and I talk to um, parents uh, all the time about technology. And I think because this has all arrived very quickly and it's changing mm. very fast, we haven't really figured out the, the social norms, like, mm. you know, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. At Google, what we've tried to do is uh, be responsible and look at the choices that people want to make. So for example, YouTube Kids is something that helps you to have a safe environment for, mm. for kids. Uh, of course, it's not up to us to defer, determine the rules. Actually, what we want you to have is choice and to be able to be educated about the ways in which you can help your children make good tech choices about technology. Mm. 
overwhelmingly positive the fact that you can educate yourself mm, and learn yeah. to do something uh, from watching YouTube videos in a way that was never possible before. Mm. But of course we want to make sure that we're also enjoying the real world that we live yeah. in. And I think if we get it right, then of course the technology helps you enjoy the real world more. It can be addictive and so much screen time. I mean, as far back as 2007, Bill Gates was saying that he was rationing mm. his children's screen time. He wouldn't let them have a phone until they were 14. And the current Apple CEO doesn't let his nephew go on any social network. So there's actually a backlash from within the industry when it comes to just saying, actually, it's not good to be in front of a computer or a tablet of course all it's not. the time. Of course it's not, any more than it's good to be in mm. front of the, you know, the television watching Sky News 24 mm. hours a day. And What? <laughs> I, I would say that it's good for people to have a variety of things <laughs> yeah. that they're doing. Um, but I, you know, it's up to individuals to, to make their choices. Mm. It's not for us to, um, to tell them how to make their mm. choices, but I think we want to give them tools yeah. so that they can um, have more control and think about how they want to, mm. to live their lives. And you'll see more, I think, from us over time mm. on ways in which you can navigate that digital world more responsibly. And just out of interest, did you ever ration your boys' screen time or access to tech when yeah. they were growing up? Because they're older now, aren't yeah, they? That's right. So my, just... my boys are 17 and 18, mm. but you know, we've certainly been on a journey of parenting yeah. from sort of very much controlling and mm -hmm. making sure that they're safe online and controlling time through mm -hmm. educating. There's an interesting shift that goes on from when you want to stop people stumbling across stuff and manage their mm -hmm. access to educating them about what's out there on the internet mm -hmm. and the fact that not all of it necessarily mm -hmm. is true and not all of it is necessary is necessarily good, just like when you let them go to school for the first mm -hmm. time and you explain to them the dangers of the roads. And so I think you know, parenting is about helping your kids explore the world, and that includes the digital world. And um, just finally, can't get away without mentioning the B word, Brexit. Mm. Uh, what does Brexit mean for Google in the UK? Well, for us in the UK, we have about 4,000 people here, and mm. we announced soon after the referendum vote that we were investing further, and we we're going to build a facility to have many more people employed at Google in the UK. So after the vote, um, we announced this big investment. Um, what I think it means is a lot of uncertainty. So when I talk to our UK customers and partners, most of them are small businesses. You know, the uncertainty about about the kind of people they can employ and all of the rules of trade really, really worry them. Mm. What I would say is um, we really focus on the bigger picture, which is this, this moment where we go from majority of the people on the planet not connected to the majority connected is a huge opportunity for Britain. We are a nation of digital shopkeepers, one of the world's leading players in e-commerce. We create great video content, we create mm. great journalism, uh, games, apps, movies, so we've got tremendous um, creative properties mm. here and you know everybody around the world wants to get access to to those kinds of things so it's an enormous opportunity so what I'm trying to ensure we're doing is uh, training people in the UK 250,000 so far we're going to train a lot more I hope to have the skills to be able to build businesses that are successful regardless of the relationship mm. with the EU and what the eventual rules are but I do understand that it's causing you know uncertainty at the moment mm.